Have you ever heard someone say that house has good bones? What are they talking about? Of course, it's the framing. Super important for a well-built house to start with a well-framed house. On the Build Show today, we're going to talk about advanced framing versus traditional framing and go beyond the typical discussion, which is just should I frame my house on 16-inch or 24-inch centers like you see here. I've got a special guest for today's Build Show. Let's get going. All right, guys, let me introduce you to my friend, Steve Basic. Steve, you're the architect on this project. And I want you to tell us a little bit about why you chose to do advanced framing on this particular house. All right, so we're gonna start out with a little pet peeve because you, you already pushed a button on me, man. <laughs> so advanced framing, let's just call it smart framing because there, there's traditional framing, advanced framing, all these different kinds of framing packages, but I like to look at it as the framing is just one of the systems in the house. Yep. And for particular projects, you need a particular system. And so in this case here, you know, a 24 inch on center framing system worked in just really good with what the system overall package was here. So we can call it advanced framing, call it whatever you want, but it's really about making decisions that are appropriate to the overall decision being made on the, on the project. I love that. So, you know, when I hear advanced framing, sometimes I think, oh, we're trying to save lumber or save money, but in reality, it's being smart and designing it from the start. Now let's talk about this house, Steve. This is what, a 2,400 square foot house-ish? Yeah, yep. Plus, Plus we're, minus, we're actually in the garage five, right here. Five, 600 square feet of garage here, good size. Okay, so 3,000 or so feet under roof on this house. Yep. And in this particular case, we've got trusses above us here, which are actually landing front to back on the house. So we're clear spanning the garage here. We've got no posts in the garage. And no posts in the garage, no posts in the house. So the uh, whole house load, is brought down to the outside walls, which is where the outside foundation wall system is. So it was inevitably the decision when I, you know, working with the builder, Jake, and we came up with the idea, let's, let's frame up those outside walls, let's throw the roof on there, get it closed in with some zip sheathing, get us nice and weather tight real quick, but now we have a factory to do everything else inside here. So uh -huh. when guys talk about, oh, well, you know, it's better to do things off site and you get better quality, well, if we build a little warehouse here, then we can control the environment and get good quality on everything we do inside. That's because true. It's like a little barn, isn't it? I exactly, love that. Exactly. All right, so then talk to me about some of the details on this framing. So we've got 24 inch on studs on these outside walls. So 24 inch on, on center framing, right? The, all the studs align with the, the trusses up above. Okay. We have our trimmers come down. Notice we don't throw the extra jack in here. They actually take the time to cut the cripple, set the sill, okay. and then run the trimmer up above that. So it eliminates a little inside of that. Gotcha. And then that goes up to our header. I always insert a header plate on the bottom. That helps us catch all the trim and stuff on the windows. Gotcha. But then notice that we do an appropriately sized header and then that creates a header pocket. Yep, so LVL header right there. And then that plate right there, that's your two by six. Uh, that you're using underneath that header. So now all our trim and everything's gonna sit flush. It's gonna in there. sit flush. But the beauty of this is, you know, I, I always talk about the framer gets to do what the framer does when the framer should do it. So mm -hmm. we're not out of sequence. And then the insulator, when he comes, he can insulate that pocket when it's time for the insulation to go in and Smart. the insulator does what the insulator does when he needs to do it. Yeah. So we're not asking somebody to come and just spray that. We're not asking the framer to mess around with two inches of rigid foam and build insulated headers. We get what we get through the normal sequence of stuff. Now, Steve, I'm also noticing, now it looks like the insulator's coming a little early, but your, your trusses seem to be quite a bit higher over that top plate. What's, what's the theory yeah. behind that? So the, the, what you see up there is the truss um, industry calls that a slider. So you notice that we basically took a two by six and we slid it down in between the joint of the bottom cord and upper cord. And what it does oh, is it basically right splits those cords uh -huh. and it elevates the heel height. Got so it. we get a little bit more insulation above the wall, which is traditionally, you know, the bad decision of just having that little throat dimension of like four inches is right. now 10 inches. So we get really good adequate insulation so above our up. wall plate. Yeah. All right, now I'm noticing you've got double top plates here. And a lot of times when I read about advanced framing, they're preaching single top plate, as little lumber as possible. What's the difference between the single and the, and the double up there? So again, when we look at this, this system as a whole, we will come to understand that the sheathing on the outside is our sheathing. 
Mm -hmm. Right, so that means we have a one-inch polyiso panel Let's walk this one that sits on the outside of the house. Okay, and because of that, then we've picked up some of the losses of the thermal efficiency in the house by simply having that R sheathing on the outside of the house. Gotcha. So because we do that, then I don't have to nickel and dime the framing package and beat up the framers. This particular framer, who does an exceptional job. He likes the double top plate because it does. It helps him straighten out his walls and it keeps him in you know, a traditional mindset, but we're still building a, a wall that's better than what's traditionally built. Got it. So these walls in here are what, 10 foot tall? Is that right? Yeah, they're, they're, well, they're nine foot, foot walls. Ceilings. No, ten, nine foot ceilings from the plate to there. Gotcha. Yep. And then I'm seeing these two sheathing breaks here. I don't normally see those in this location. What's going on with that? Yeah, so we, we couldn't get the 10 foot zip R panels here so what the framer chose to do is to keep that blocking in a comfort range right ah. so they're not working off of ladders or scaffolding to deal with the joints so they railroaded the lower piece they railroaded the upper piece and then they put that joint in the middle so now all of the blocking and stuff is done at a very convenient level got it that makes sense now tell me about this hardware i'm seeing over this big header on this window now this window just for clarity hasn't been cut out yet check out our other videos about why Talk to me about that clip right there, Steve. So that's just a simple header hanger. If you notice that we went down to a single jack here mm -hmm. in the code and you know window openings over three feet would require a double jack. Okay. But one way we eliminated that other jack was to simply put in that header hanger there, which adds assistance to carrying that header. Gotcha, that makes sense. And then tell me about insulation for these cavities later, because you've got this big five and a half inch deep cavity. Plus we talked about the zip R, which is one inch thick. That's gonna give you R 6.6 .6 on the outside. Right. And then what are you gonna do inside the wall? So on now? the inside, we're gonna splash it with an inch of closed cell foam. Okay. We'll probably bring that up a little bit and then we're just gonna fill the rest with a blown fiberglass, blown in bat gotcha. package. I mean, this, this is a house that, you know, we, we care about the decisions, but it's still a house that's kind of in that commodity realm where we're showing people that you can build the average house really well. Yeah right? That yeah. you don't have to go over the top to build it to get a, a really good house. And, and honestly, the, the, the R6 outside is more important than anything we put in the cavity. Right. Right. Because you've got a, you've got all that continuous on the outside without any breakage. Because each one of these studs is probably uh, around R1 per inch. -ish. Well, they're, yeah, R1. I, they're, uh, R, uh, sorry, two by six stud is about R5.5. Five, okay. Right. So when you look at a wall system, if we were able to take all of the exterior walls in this house and make them one wall, mm -hmm. all right, that would suggest that about 20 percent, well, probably about 18 percent is framing. Okay. And that's R5 ish, right? Right. right. 63, 64 percent is cavity. Mm -hmm. So that's your true R value in the wall. And then another 20 percent ish is windows ah. and these these windows are better than your usual you know 0.3 windows these are going to be closer to r7 r8 windows wow. they're triple glaze so we elevate that but understand that those three major components that make up a wall the minute i put our sheathing on the outside it improves the 60 percent of the cavity area but it also improves the 20 percent of the opaque area where the framing is and it effectively more than doubles wow. the R value Dang. at the opaque framing. So when you normalize those values, it brings your R value way up, right? Yeah. I had one of the, the best building scientists I've ever met. And I sat down at lunch with him one day and I said, hey, Gus, what, what's the best wall we can build? You know, what, give me the skinny here. I'm a young architect, I want the secrets, right? He said, it's real simple. Put as much insulation as you can afford on the outside of the house and you'll never go wrong. Smart, really smart. Steve, anything I missed on the topic of framing in particular in this house that you wanted to mention? No, I mean, but uh, you know, as we look at the expanse, you know, again, you can see that the, because we're carrying it from wall to wall, it gives you this factory environment yeah. to do everything. You know, and we, we were able to do some good air sealing details. I know all this stuff you're gonna pick up in some later videos, but it's just kind of creating that enclosure so that we take an on-site construction project and make it more like a factory built environment because yeah. we inevitably built our on-site factory here. So awesome. Guys, for more on this project, this is called the Hybrid House, right, Steve? Yes, sure. Uh, Steve's the architect. My buddy Jake Bruton uh, with Aero Builders in Columbia, Missouri is the builder here. And Jake is brand new on our network that we've just come out with. So if you don't know about that, 
Go to buildshownetwork.com. You're gonna have several videos, including several with Steve, telling you the behind the scenes on this house. There's a lot of technology behind this house that's not expensive, it's just smart. And Steve and Jake did an amazing job in designing and building this house and doing it on a really reasonable budget of under $250 a square foot for this house for some amazing uh, both scores and performance and products going in here, but really off the shelf stuff. So go to buildshownetwork.com, follow Steve on Instagram, we'll put a link in the description. If you wanna see more of Steve's work too, we've actually shot a bunch of videos with Steve uh, from Boston where Steve is based out of. So I'll put a link in the description to those as well. Steve's built several passive houses and some amazing projects. If you're not already a subscriber though, hit that subscribe button below. We've got content every Tuesday and every Friday. Follow us on Twitter, Instagram. Otherwise, we'll see you next time on The, the Build, Build Show. Show. <laughs> yeah, baby. <laughs>